What's going on guys? So, standing in front of the car today because, well, I don't know what else to stand in front of and who wants to look at my TV anymore. Nine times out of ten, I'm standing in front of the TV and who wants to see me stand in front of the TV anymore? Wouldn't you rather look at the engine in this? Anyways, so I just wanted to do a little update for you guys. Uh, I'm not going to be able to really work on the car today. I'm uh, waiting on parts. I did get tracking for the clutch. It does say it will be here tomorrow, which would be Thursday. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to be updated or change at all because we did have a big amount of snow here in Pennsylvania uh, yesterday causing a big backup. No UPS, no USPS was able to deliver. So I'm wondering if that's been updated already to show that, okay, yes, it's going to deliver for tomorrow or no, we're going to backlog and it's actually going to be delivered on Friday. I'm hoping for Thursday for the fact that I can get it in that night and hopefully have someone help me put the transmission in. Um, I'm also gonna be a little backed up. It's my wife's birthday weekend. She just turned Thursday on Tuesday. So I kinda have to throw her something for the weekend and uh, try to figure it out. Um, gotta, you know, do something nice for the wife because I'm, who knows. Anyway, so yeah. So for the clutch install, I'm gonna do a detailed clutch install for you guys, kinda like I did for the flywheel itself. Um, I got a lot of good reviews and feedback from that. Not, not like putting on a flywheel is very hard, but I'm trying to think back when I was a kid going, I have no idea how to take a transmission off or doing this stuff. So I guess it doesn't hurt to kind of detail that stuff. I know my videos aren't the highest quality, but I try to go over and best I can to kind of detail what you need to do. Um, kind of like I did with that one, you know, 75 foot pounds is where the ARP torque bolt or to torque down the bolts need to be at. Um, how to put the flywheel on, line it up. It's pretty basic stuff, but when I was a kid, I didn't know how to do that, so I'm trying to think of it in that mentality of sorts. So I'll do the same thing with the Clutch Master clutch I'm going to be putting in the R154. Uh, that's going to be a little tricky because I'm told the throw-up bearing is actually built into the clutch. Instead of it being separate sitting back on the hub assembly, uh, it actually sits inside the clutch, which is a little weird to me. Um, most aren't like that so that's definitely gonna be a little learn bit a little bit of a learning experience in itself for me so I'm definitely gonna tackle that and try to go about that in a little bit different manner I do have one other cool update I can't go too far into details but I'm gonna be working with a company called Drift Motion uh, they're working on something pretty cool for the our cars right now uh, especially for the R154 I'll do a little bit of a review and kind of go over that for you guys here in a little bit uh, I spoke with Aaron I want to say it was two days ago now and uh, he's all on board to help me out. It's pretty cool. He's in Southern California and I'm up here in bumfuck Pennsylvania. So I do appreciate it, Aaron. I appreciate you uh, giving me the support and doing all that I like to do with the Supra. So I thank you very much, man. Um, so yeah, be a cool little project coming up. Stay tuned for that one. Um, wait, it's probably gonna be another couple weeks yet. He's still working out some bugs with this item. So once it gets here and gets shipped in, I'll go over it in full detail with you guys. I know anyone that has an R154 or Super is going to love this item. So I can't wait to share that for you guys. One other thing guys that I wanted to kind of give a shout out for is Cassidy Byers. Um, he was kind enough, if you guys watched my videos recently, uh, the new intro and stuff, he created that for me. He was kind enough to actually reach out to me. Uh, kind of said, kind of humbled me a little bit, said, you know, thank you very much. Uh, the videos I've made so far has really helped him and that meant a lot to me for him even saying that and he was kind enough to go ahead and make me that new intro which I could never make something like that or at least I can't right now I can't dedicate the time to it so for him to go out there and do that just to help me out means a lot so thank you very much man I do appreciate that dog um, it makes the intro of the videos look much better and it's much cooler than my flash up with my super revving in the background and you can hear the actual flywheel squeaking. If you guys actually listen to my old video, uh, videos in the beginning, you can actually hear the flywheel squeaking and screeching on startup and revving. It's pretty bad. So I'm glad he made that for me. I do appreciate it, dog. Thank you very much. So someone had given me a good idea also. I'm not sure if the channel is quite big enough for this, but I want to meet some of you guys. Um, I had made a video saying, you know, I need some ideas. What do you guys like to see or what would you like to see me do next? And someone made the suggestion of doing a subscriber meet. Now, I only have, I think there's a little over 5,200 of you right now, but I thought that'd be pretty cool to do a subscriber meet. Go to a car show and just, just to be a regular car show and you guys meet me there or something. I don't, I'm not big enough to throw my own car show or do any of that thing yet. I just, I don't have the following locally. I mean, a lot of you guys are either out of the country or somewhere else further out there in the country. So I'd like to do a local subscriber meet and kind of meet you guys, but I would like to get a little bit more gauge back from you hearing if you would like to see something like that. I'd love to do something where I can meet you all, kind of pick your brains, you pick my brain, kind of get some more ideas, kind of see where you guys are 
coming from? What would you like to see from me? So if that's something you guys would like to see, please let me know. Uh, comment below or even shoot me a message on my Facebook page, which is Pure Function Engineering, or you can shoot me a DM over on my Instagram, which is Pure Function underscore. So let me know guys what you think. Last thing I wanna go over here guys is Harbor Freight Tools versus Snap-on, Matco, et cetera. Uh, I've been wanting to kind of do something like this. I've heard some people say, why do you use this tool? Why do you use that? Um, I've kind of started a collection of tools over the years. Um, I've been doing modifying cars or working on them whenever I could since I was 15, 16 years old. I remember getting the first Craftsman tool set from my father at 15 and thinking that was the coolest thing in the world. I can actually remember jacking up my car up and down with the jack that comes in the back of one of these kind of cars. I remember having a Celica and I was using that jack where you had to literally put a bar through it, spin it once, goes up a little bit. Put the bar back through, spin it once, and it goes up a little bit. That's how I used to jack up the car every time I needed to work on it. Yeah, took me quite some time when I wanted to work on the wheels or paint the calibers and stuff. It was not fun whatsoever. So I did it like that for, good God, probably two or three years till I actually got my own jack and then started using that. So when I moved in here, I decided I wanted to get as many tools as I could. You guys saw all the tools and cabinets and stuff I have. I wanted to go all out and just buy as much as I could. But since I'm a do-it-yourselfer and kind of at the house all the time, I'm like, why do I need Snap-on? Why do I need this crazy stuff? I started going to Harbor Freight, and even myself, I'm kind of like, ah, this stuff isn't the greatest. But after using it, I've had zero issue. It works very well, and for for my use, for a guy that's a DIYer, someone that's working from their home, it's fantastic. Their warranty's great. Uh, they stand behind their product. About the only thing I wouldn't buy is that most of their electronics, uh, anything that has to do with their power tools and stuff, anything of that nature, uh, I'm not too keen on. They had multiple issues from what I've seen in the past, from power drills to their grinders, etc. They just tend to burn out really fast. Uh, anything that's cordless, the batteries are junk in them. So I don't really recommend those, but anything like hand tools or anything of that nature, I, I wouldn't skip a beat on buying any of their stuff. All of their stuff I've bought so far, so far has been fantastic. Um, but I get a lot of flack for it. A lot of guys say, why don't you buy Snap-on? Why don't you buy Macco? Why don't you buy Mac tools? And uh, I just, I can't justify the price for them. I can understand if I was a truly a mechanic and it was day in, day out, and I need to rely on those tools, and I would then do it. But another reason a lot of these guys buy them is because the Snap-ons, the Macs of the world, they let you finance that shit. And a lot of the guys, when they say they need X amount of tools right up front, they need a toolbox and stuff, they can go to a Snap-on and finance all of it, where I just pay straight up cash for everything. Um, now I know that stuff costs three times as more, and the Snap-on guy comes directly to you, but to me that just doesn't make sense. For a DIYer, I'm not gonna pay whatever, four or $500 for a set of sockets. And yes, it can get that outrageous, expensive, especially if you're dealing with Snap-on. I've seen the prices, uh, toolboxes for 10, 15,000. Um, and that's not unusual. Um, my entire setup cost me $2,400. I don't need one small little box that's gonna cost me 5,000 bucks. This doesn't make any sense to me. If it was getting used on day in, day out, and I need to make sure it never broke down, it wouldn't make sense, but. I never quite understand the whole fascination behind that, even for people at home. Like, I just don't quite get it. So guys, that's gonna be it for this one. Just wanted to give you a small update. I appreciate everything y'all are doing. Um, I still have t-shirts for sale, guys. 25 bucks shipped anywhere in the lower 48 states. Um, I would love if you guys could come check out my Facebook page at Pure Function Engineering, or come see my uh, Instagram, which I use a lot. I mean, a lot. Uh, come over to my Instagram, which is purefunction underscore. Um, if there's anything else you guys need, please shoot me a message below. Thank you very much, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.